What if I told you there are five things, yes, just five, that can protect you from brain disorders like Alzheimer's, dementia, and Parkinson's? Most people wait until symptoms show up, but by then, the damage is done. If you put these five brain protecting habits in place right now, you could radically reduce your risk or even reverse early signs of decline. Let's get into number one, using ketones as a fuel for your brain. You see, the brain is what I call the most greediest organ. It's only 2% in your entire body weight, but it's using 20% of your energy. And when we're stuck burning sugar and glucose, like 93% of Americans are, what happens is the receptor sites for insulin in the brain become resistant. That's why these brain disorders are called type 3 diabetes. Enter ketones. It's an alternate fuel source and a very powerful fuel source for the neurons in your brain. A metabolically damaged brain, especially in Alzheimer's, it struggles to use glucose effectively. Ketones bypass insulin resistance in the brain, reduces oxidative stress, and fuel your neurons more efficiently. A 2021 study in the Journal of Alzheimer's Disease showed that when patients with mild cognitive impairment consumed ketone esters, which are called exogenous ketones, their cognitive performance significantly improved in just six weeks. You see, ketones act as signaling molecules that communicate with your mitochondria. The brain has the highest concentration of mitochondria. It's pretty remarkable. Most cells have maybe a few hundred to a few thousand mitochondria, these little energy battery packs within your cells. The brain, there's regions in the brain that have over a million mitochondria in a single cell. That's how important the mitochondria are, especially for the brain. Ketones create mitochondrial biogenesis, which is the birth, the creation of new mitochondria, especially in the brain. Ideally, you want to get your body to produce its own ketone. So there's a few ways you can do this. Number one, you could lower your total carbohydrate to under 50 grams per day and increase your protein and fat. In my brand new book, Metabolic Freedom, I show you the exact steps here. For most people, that will switch over from burning sugar to burning fat and producing ketones. Then I would pair that with intermittent fasting, doing an 18-6 intermittent fast daily because you're going to enhance ketone production with the intermittent fast. That means out of a 24-hour period, for 18 hours, you're fasted, just water, coffee, electrolytes, tea, no food, and then you have six hours to get two to three meals in. So 12 to 6 p.m. could be your eating window, 6 p.m. to 12 p.m. the next day could be your fasting window. And the third most important step here with ketones is to lower your fasting insulin levels. This is really critical. If you've never tested your fasting insulin, get it done immediately. Fasting insulin is a blood test. It's different than a fasting blood sugar or an A1C. It's arguably even more important. And if you could get your fasting insulin levels between three and six on a consistent basis, you will never, that's is a bold statement, but you will never get these cognitive diseases. A pro tip for you, how do you know if you're in ketosis? You could get a keto mojo and it's a finger prick machine that tests your blood. You put the blood into on a strip, put the strip into a meter and it reads your ketones, reads your glucose. If it shows 0.5 or higher, you're in ketosis and ideally your fasting blood sugar should be between 70 and 90 as well. If you go to ketocampmachine.com and use the coupon code ketocamp24 at checkout, you could get a nice discount and that is Keto Camp Camp with a K. We'll drop that link down below. Let's move on to the second thing I want you to do here. Zone two cardio and movement. One of the best forms of exercise for brain health is zone two cardio. Steady movement that gets you slightly breathless, but you're still able to walk. So this could be a fast paced walk, a brisk walk or a walk with a, a weighted vest. This is because this type of exercise produces something in your brain called BDNF, brain derived neurotropic factor. This is brain fertilizer, miracle grow for the brain. It helps your brain cells optimize and connect with others and be more efficient. It actually creates new brain cells. It's incredible. A 2011 meta-analysis published in Lancet Neurology found that regular physical activity reduced dementia risk by up to 38%, and a big part of it was the BDNF. So how do you get this BDNF to be produced? Well, you could go for a 30 to 45 minute brisk walk, and if you could do that after your biggest meal of the day, you'll get even more benefits, or you could just aim to get small walks throughout the day, 10 minutes here and there, and accumulate about 10,000 steps per day. You could also go for a nice bike ride, easy cycling, you could swim laps, you could go on a rowing machine, all of these regular movements it also improve lymphatic flow, it reduces insulin resistance, and it flushes inflammatory toxins from your brain. The third thing you want to do here is to consume an antioxidant-rich, low-toxin diet. 
Look, the brain is 60% fat and highly sensitive to oxidative damage and environmental toxins. A low quality diet will accelerate cognitive decline, even if you eat healthy. So here are the best foods that I've researched that I talk about in Metabolic Freedom that protect your brain. Write these down. We have wild caught salmon, rich in DHA and EPA, much, much better than taking fish oil. I'm not a fan of fish oil. We have blueberries, also called brain berries. You want to get organic blueberries rich in anthocyanins, powerful polyphenol for the brain. And here's a cool tip. If you ate your organic berries, if you ate them frozen, you get actually more benefits from those antioxidants. Then we have pasture raised eggs. This is eggs with the yolk, rich in choline, great for the brain. We have grass fed beef and lamb, rich in B12 and iron, great for the brain. Then we have broccoli sprouts, which you could find in supplement form, and it contains sulforaphane, which is great for brain detox. And I'll drop a link for the one I use in the notes down below. Then we have my favorite here, or one of my favorites, real olive oil, organic extra virgin olive oil. It is rich in polyphenols, monounsaturated fats, and a specific polyphenol called oleocanthal, which triggers something called autophagy in the brain, which is this kind of like Pac-Man going in your brain cells, cleaning up junk when you consume high quality olive oil. The challenge is that most olive oil out there is rancid. It's cut with the seed oil. It's not even powerful. And if you take a shot of your olive oil and it goes down smooth, that's a red flag. It should burn your throat. It should make your tongue fuzzy. Heck, it should even make you cough. So my personal favorite olive oil that I get every quarter is from the Fresh Pressed Olive Oil Club. It is hands down the best tasting, highest quality olive oil, rich in oleocanthals, and you could find them. You, got, you could actually get a $39 bottle from them for $1 over at ketocampoliveoil.com. Camp is spelled with a K, ketocampoliveoil.com. I'll drop that link down below. Then we have turmeric. It contains curcumin, which reduces neuroinflammation. You want to consume turmeric with a fatty meal. But it's not just adding in these anti-inflammatory foods. You want to remove the top inflammatory foods that create neuroinflammation. That's going to be seed oils, also called vegetable oils. They oxidize and they immediately inflame your brain, leading to brain fog and neurodegenerative conditions. So these are going to be the ones you want to avoid. We have canola oil called rapeseed oil in the UK, corn oil, cottonseed oil, sunflower oil, soybean oil, safflower oil, rice brand oil, grapeseed oil, and I would even throw fish oil as an inflammatory fat to avoid as well. Swap those with saturated fats, monounsaturated fats that are great for the brain. That's going to be butter, ghee, beef tallow, duck fat, coconut oil, olive oil, as I already mentioned, and also avocado oil. You also want to avoid foods that contain high fructose corn syrup directly linked to memory loss, and also avoid glyphosate-laced grains and foods like wheat, soy, corn. This is linked to leaky gut and neurotoxicity. And then lastly, here on the list of things to avoid is artificial sweeteners, sucralose, aspartame, ACE-K, saccharin. These disrupt neurotransmitters and impair memory. Number four thing you want to do to protect the brain is to get deep restorative sleep. There's a process in your brain that gets activated, which is a built-in detoxification system for the brain. And it's called the glymphatic system. And when you get enough deep sleep, which you could track. I'll talk about how to do that. Your brain, this is super cool. Studies show the brain literally is shrinking in size temporarily during this time. Why? Because there's a fluid called the cerebral spinal fluid that then washes over the brain. It's like dishwasher fluid, and it starts to clean out plaques, proteins, and toxins during this process. But if you're not getting enough deep sleep, you're not getting this process, and these plaques, proteins, and toxins accumulating in the brain triggering brain disorders. A nature neuroscience study published in 2013 showed that just one night of poor sleep led to increased amyloid accumulation in the brain. So you want to track your deep sleep and you want to aim to get at least an hour and a half, 90 minutes of deep sleep each night to get enough of this glymphatic system. You can use an aura ring like I use here or an Apple Watch, a Fitbit, a Whoop Band, whatever you want to track, but track it and aim to get 90 minutes. I'll drop links for those devices down below. Here's what I've worked with thousands of people on this, and here's what I've done for them and myself to get the 90 minutes of deep sleep each night. The first thing, you want to avoid food at least three hours before bed, even better, 
at least five hours before bed to get good, deep detoxifying sleep. You wanna avoid blue light exposure at night. That's gonna be television screen, phone screen, artificial lights where blue light blocking glasses at night. You want to make sure your Wi-Fi router is not in your bedroom. Your phone is not in your bedroom or plugged in close to the bed. This will disrupt sleep. You might wanna add in magnesium right before bed, especially magnesium three and eight, which is great for the brain. And I'll drop a link for the one I use down below. And you wanna keep your bedroom cold and dark. Studies show 65 degrees Fahrenheit is where the thermostat should be for that deep detoxifying sleep and then wear a sleep mask. I'll drop a link for the one I use in the notes down below. And number five here on the list is to have mental stimulation and stress resilience. Look, brains that are constantly being challenged stay young. Brains that are chronically stressed age faster. Chronic stress shrinks the hippocampus, which is the memory center in the brain. It raises cortisol, which literally eats away at the brain volume over time. A 2014 study in psychosomatic medicine showed that high perceived stress was linked to accelerated memory loss in adults aged 45 and above. So how do you train your brain and lower stress? Good question. Mental stimulation. You could learn a new language, play a musical instrument, do puzzles, memory games, or read books. These are ways to stimulate your brain. Stress resilience. You could have a daily meditation practice. You could do breath work, spend time in nature, have deep conversations. All of this really helps. If you wanna learn more about meditation, go get Dave Asprey's book, Heavily Meditated. And then the last piece here for the brain is to take what I believe is the most powerful supplement for the brain to lower neuroinflammation, to lower inflammation in your body, lower blood sugar, lower blood pressure. I talk about this in chapter 10 of Metabolic Freedom. UC Davis has a study showing when you take vitamin G, you lower blood pressure, lower blood sugar levels. There's also a study published from Harvard and JAMA that I referenced in the book that showed 49,275 nurses. And out of those nurses who took vitamin G every day, they had a 9% reduction in dying from any death, any all-cause mortality versus the nurses who didn't take vitamin G, and a 15% reduction in dying from cardiovascular disease versus the nurses who didn't take vitamin G. So I don't have a link or a coupon code for vitamin G because vitamin G is the feeling of gratitude. If you could feel gratitude every day, you would protect your body, lower inflammation in the body, in the brain, and you're gonna get all of these amazing benefits. And you could get your vitamin G right now. If you're watching on YouTube, let me know in the comment section, what are you grateful for today? Before I get to your top questions here, I wanna encourage you to go purchase my brand new book, Metabolic Freedom. We're actually giving away an entire course on the metabolism for free. And I sell this course for $997 and you get it for free, no credit card required when you purchase Metabolic Freedom today. It's available on hardcover, Kindle, Audible, and Spotify. I narrated those audios myself. Any of those platforms work if you go to metabolicfreedombook.com or scan the QR code on the screen, buy the book, put your info, your name, your email, your order number, and you'll be sent that course for free instantly. I'll drop a link for that in the notes down below as well. Now, let's get to your questions. Is it safe to follow a ketogenic diet long-term for brain health? For most people, I don't recommend continuous ketosis. I recommend metabolic flexibility. I'm usually in ketosis like 90% of the time and 10% of the time I'm out, and I talk about how to do that in metabolic freedom. Now, this is different if you have epilepsy. Definitely work with your practitioner on that. And for those individuals, they probably have to be in continuous ketosis long-term. What blood tests besides fasting insulin should I get to check my risk for cognitive decline? Ooh, great question. I would recommend getting some inflammatory markers done. So high sensitivity C-reactive protein, also called HSCRP. Great inflammatory marker to get down. You wanna see that under 1.0. Homocysteine, another great inflammatory marker you wanna see in the single digits. And I will also recommend an A1C test, which is a three-month average of your last three months worth of blood sugar. You want to see that at 5.2% or below. How can I detox from seed oils and glyphosate if I've consumed them for years? Well, the half-life for these seed oils is 680 days, meaning if you stop eating them today, about two years later, half of them will be in your brain cells, creating inflammation. There is a way to speed this up. Fasting, PC oil, which is phosphatidylcholine oil. I would start with a teaspoon per day and work your way up to about three teaspoons per day. I'll drop a link in a coupon code for the one I use. And uh, also strength training because that achieves autophagy as well as the fasting recommendation. Now for glyphosate, you want to consume high quality fulvic and humic minerals. I use beam minerals. You could actually get them for 20% off. I use two of their bottles, which I'll drop a link for them down below, but it's also beamminerals.com slash ketocamp for that. 
What cooking oils do you recommend instead of seed oils? I, I listed them earlier, but the best fats to cook with are animal fats. That's going to be butter, ghee, beef tallow, and then even coconut oil, although a fruit is a good saturated fat to cook in. How do I put all these five strategies into a simple daily routine without getting overwhelmed? I would choose one of the five tips, master that, and once you've gained momentum there, move on to the next one. Master that, gain momentum, and move on to the next one. It's all about a tweak a week. If you really want to learn more, get the book Metabolic Freedom. I hope you enjoyed this. Let's be proactive here, not reactive. You know, Einstein said intellectual solve problems, geniuses prevent them, and you are a genius for watching or listening to this entire episode of the Metabolic Freedom Podcast. Thank you. Share it. Leave a rating and review on your audio podcast platforms, and I'll see you on the next one. And if you love this lesson, fasting is one of the best ways to enhance BDNF, lower insulin, enhance ketones, and also repair the brain. And I just published a video on what happens in your body when you don't eat food for two days. This is remarkable in your body. I go through a whole timeline here. So check out the clip from that video and then click the video on the screen and I'll see you in that lesson. At the 12 to 14 hour mark, two major benefits start to happen. Number one, you complete digestion. It takes about 14 hours to complete digestion and it takes a lot of energy to digest food. So there's a process called energy diversion that is turned on around this time frame 